Hi everyone! In this video, we'll try to find the answer to the question What is the difference between smoke and sanity testing? We are going to check ISTQB theory and talk in human language after. Let's begin! And this time we start with the human language. What do people and testing instructors say about sanity and smoke testing? If you Google it, you can see the common picture. We already have seen it with the testing types and test techniques. Everybody has their own opinion and says completely different things. And in this video, we'll add our opinion to confuse you even more. We have read many websites and our conclusion is the next. Some people say that smoke testing is the same as sanity testing. Other people say that the smoke testing is very different from sanity testing. That's all. That's conclusion number one. Conclusion number two is that it is not clear what the difference is, because different people says different things. So you can open a new website and use it for the answer, and we decided to go with our common path and check what the more official and formal literature says. As usual, we used ISTQB and a formal reference. Currently, ISTQB is the leap in global certification scheme in the field of software testing. And when we talk formally, we'll use our syllabus and the glossary as references. A link to the ISTQB website will be provided in the materials for the video. We spent a lot of time investigating different levels and versions of the ISTQB. And we found only one sentence in the ISTQB glossary. It's related to the smoke test and sounds like this. Smoke test. A test suite that covers the main functionality of a component or system to determine whether it works properly before planned testing begins. This is a standard definition for smoke testing. So what about sanity testing? According to the ISTQB, these words are synonyms – smoke test, sanity test, confidence test, and intake test. We will share the screenshot from the glossary, and you can check on our site if you want. And as usual, we'll provide the link to it in the materials for the video. But the conclusion is that half of the testers, including ISTQB, agree that smoke and sanity testings are synonyms. And you can go with this answer if you want. On our side, we continued this investigation. And we went to our best friend in this kind of situation, the Wikipedia. Yes, it's a human language as well, but we decided to go with it rather than any other website. Wikipedia is the best thing ever. Anyone in the world can write anything they want about any subject. So you know you're getting the best possible information. And that's why we like it. Wiki differentiates smoke and sanity testing. Let's check what it says. Smoke tests are a subset of test cases that cover the most important functionality of a component or system to check if the main functions of the software appear to work correctly. Basically, Wiki agrees with ISTQB. Let's check what it says about sanity. The sanity testing evaluates the result of a subset of application functionality to determine whether it is possible and reasonable to proceed with further testing of the entire application. So, it is a lot of fancy words, but it is nearly the same as smoke testing. And there is a clarification in the Wikipedia. A distinction is sometimes made that a smoke test is a non-exhaustive test that ascertains whether the most crucial functions of a program work before proceeding with further testing, whereas a sanity test refers to whether specific functionality, such as a particular bug fix, works as expected without testing the wider functionality of the software. You can pause the video and read this one more time on your own and most likely it will confuse you a lot. It still confuses us and everybody else. 
So we are going to share our thoughts in a practical example. Let's begin. Okay, let's start with a website. The typical one we use for the examples. Online shop for the Genie Jeans company, JJ. And currently, we have version 1 of the website. On the card page, you can change the quantity, size and color of the jeans. As a tester, you need to have test cases for these functionalities. And we are going to use the checklist. This one was written for the first version of the website. It starts with the user's story. As a user, I want to be able to change jeans quantity. And we write valid and invalid, or positive and negative test scenarios. The user changes the quantity from 1 to 2, from 2 to 1, from 2 to 3, and a lot more scenarios like this. Most likely equivalence partitioning and VVA test techniques will help you to write this properly. But this is the theme of another video. And we have more user stories related to the card page and more test cases related to those. And all of these were run when we tested the first version of the card page. And currently, developers are working on the second version of the page. We forgot the testing principle. Early testing saves time and money. So we don't do anything, just sit and wait, when the first ticket will be ready for testing. And finally, one of the developers moved the ticket. The user story sounds like this. As a user, I want to be able to apply the coupon so I can buy jeans at a discount. This is the first story, a part of version 2 of the website. And we create a separate checklist for this version. This is the first story of version 2. But we already tested three stories in the first version of the website. So this one is the fourth story in total. And write test cases for it. Apply a valid coupon. Apply a coupon when there are two or more products in the cart. And a lot more, functional, unfunctional, valid, invalid. All possible scenarios we want to test. And we spent a lot of time writing a lot of scenarios. Now it is time to start testing. So we go to the website and we can see that apply coupon section is displayed. So it is version 2 of the website. Currently it is 2.0, as we said in the coupon story, is the first one of the version 2. And the count starts from 0. Ok, we are ready to test. What are the test cases that we will run first? In experienced testers, we start from these test cases. Invalid scenarios for version 2 of the website. Apply expired coupon. Empty coupon. Invalid coupon. Some special characters and more complex and negative scenarios. To be able to break something and log a bug. And mostly it is a bad approach and we will talk about this in a separate video. Another obvious way to start testing is to run positive test cases for version 2. Apply the valid coupon for example. And mostly testers do like this. They test the positive test cases for the new functionalities. You can pause the video and think about what would you do in this case. Ok, we hope whoever wanted to pause the video did that. Let's find the answer. If the answer is neither positive nor negative, tests should be run first. In the scope of smoke and sanity tests, you should start with smoke testing. Let us remind you what those are. Smoke tests are a subset of test cases that cover the most important functionality of a component or system used to aid assessment of whether the main function of the software appeared to work correctly. So, in the scope of our testing, we need to select test cases from version 1 of the website and run those first. And we shouldn't run all the test cases. We need those which check the main functions of the software. In our case, it would be one test case per user story. Change the quantity from 1 to 2. Change the size from L to XL. Change the color from blue to yellow. 
These three test cases are the smoke test suite. And we need to run them each time when the new version of the software is available. And this is exactly one of those times. The first story of version 2 of the website is deployed to the test environment for testing. It is version 2, so we need to run our smoke test cases. So we start with the first test case, change the product quantity in the cart from 1 to 2. We click on the arrow. And we expect that quantity will be changed from 1 to 2. But nothing happens. The quantity remains the same. Only one pair of jeans is in the cart. And that is the reason why we run the smoke test cases first. Because there is a high risk that changes in the new version of the software can introduce the bugs in related or not related areas. In our case, it is the code of the new coupon functionality in version 2 of the website. Somehow broke the existing essential functionality and changed the product quantity in the cart. And we need developers to fix this bug before we continue our testing. So it is time to do our job to log the bug. And it sounds something like this. The number of products doesn't change after clicking on the arrow. It happens on version 2 of the website. Priority is critical. And we mark the user's story with the coupon functionality as blocked, and again when the bug will be fixed. And we don't need to wait too long. The priority is critical, so developers fix it very fast. And move the tickets to ready for testing. So we need to go back to the website. This time you can see that the version is 2.1. The primary version is the same as version 2, but we need to mark all the code changes so when the bug is fixed or the story is developed, the subversion will be changed. So where do we start testing this time? We will start with the same tests as we started before, with smoke testing, with the same three test cases. And the first test case is to change the quantity. So we go to the website again. We click on the arrow and this time the quantity is changed. Then we run two more smoke checks. We change the color of the jeans and then change the size of the jeans. All three test cases successfully passed. We can continue. Let's check our board. And as the first test case was actually the bug verification test. So the bug is verified and closed. It means our user story isn't blocked anymore. Time to test the coupon functionality. And we face the same problem again. Where we should start? What type of the coupon we need to apply first? And this time we won't play in riddles. We need to start with the sanity testing. Let us remind you of its definition. Sanity testing evaluates the result of a subset of application functionality to determine whether it is possible and reasonable to proceed with further testing of the entire application. OK, let's translate that to the human language. It means that we need to start with a test case or test cases that will check the main basic functionality of the feature. And in our case, it will be test case number one, applying a valid coupon, that is our sanity test case. Let's run it. We go back to the website and we apply the valid coupon. And we can see that the new valid price is displayed. Now we need to pay only 8 instead of $10 total price. It means that our sanity test case is best. We can continue with the testing now. Or as the definition says, Determine whether it is possible and reasonable to proceed with further testing of the entire application. And now, when both smoke testing is done and the sanity testing is done, we can continue with all other test cases we have on the checklist. Functional, non-functional, positive and negative. That's all what we wanted to share about the smoke and sanity testings. And I hope we help to visualize what is hidden behind the Wikipedia definition. If you disagree, leave a comment. You can pause the video and read the definitions one more time if you want. And that's our answer to the question, what is the difference between smoke and scent testing?